Hey guys, so got the Honda Odyssey. Um, this is a 2005, it's got right about 150,000 miles on it. And here lately we've been having an issue, the boys can't get in and out of one of the power sliding doors. So let me just show you what it does. You just pull the handle, and it doesn't do anything. It cracks open, you can see I got a little gap here, but it won't actually move. So in order to actually get it to close, you have to come around over to the, um, to the switch on the dash here. You gotta turn it to manual mode, and then go close it manually. When this happens, you'll have this light up here that will stay on it, it says slide door. So that indicates that there is a, an error code that's been triggered for one reason or another, something's failing. And I'm gonna show you how to figure out what that code is. And if you have the same code as me or one of the other similar codes, then hopefully this will show you how to repair this issue. Hey guys, so down here by the brake pedal, and here is this little slide area where the fuses are. Now, what you can try doing is you can try pulling the number seven fuse. Now this is a 2005, I believe these fuse locations are the same up until 2010. Don't quote me on that, for 2005, I know it's for sure a number seven fuse. But if you look, number seven fuse is, it's called the backup fuse. Um, I'm assuming that means backup lights, so your reverse lights. Um, it's, but these power doors are all on that same circuit. But what you can do, you can pull that fuse, wait like 20 seconds or so, put the fuse back in, and try it. And a lot of times, it will work. But sometimes, and most often, if you get the same issue, it's going to work three, four, maybe five times, and then the same issue is going to happen. You can try that just to see if it gets you by. If it continues working for, you know, a week, great, it buys you a little more time. But to check codes, you need to get down in here. So this little panel is just held on by a couple clips. There's one in, like, straight behind here, and one up here, and then there's, like, this green clip up here. And basically, you just have to kind of force them out. Just pull. It feels like you're going to break stuff. And you may, but that's the only way to get them out. So I'll just snap it out, and then down here where it goes under the kick panel, or under the uh, sill plate, um, you'll just kind of have to flex it around to get it out. Your hood latch should slide right out. And there we go, that piece is out. And you can see on the back side of this, there's these little um, spots. You can see here, this clip came out, but the one that goes here is still stuck in the body. So you might need some needle nose pliers or something to pull that out. But what we're going after is... We're going after this little socket right here. This is called the MICU port. Um, and I don't know if you can see in there, there's two pins in there. And basically Honda's got a diagnostic jumper test special tool thing, but all it is is a switch that you can turn on and off that basically connects those two pins together. So someone online had a good suggestion, just get a wad of aluminum foil, because that's all you're doing is trying to touch those two pins together and just sh shove some aluminum foil in there and then go on to the next step. Okay, so I just got a thin strip of aluminum foil here. Um, if you had a little gum wrapper or something, that probably worked too. I don't have to gum, but. So basically you just wind this up small enough so that it'll fit in that port, connect those two terminals. You don't want to shove super hard because they are fairly small, thin, flimsy terminals. But you just want to get it wadded in there like that. And then we'll come up here and just gonna throw the key in, turn it on, and right down here, this should change. There we go. Alright, so you can see this is a body code, and this particular code is B2088. And that is the code that we're looking for. So that particular body code means the right power sliding door base position switch circuit open or shorted. So the long of the short is in the latch mechanism back here on the back of the door where it latches into the, into when you open the door, there's like a little latch loop and the motor that draws and sucks the door in, there's a position switch inside that latch assembly and that position switch has gone bad. But Honda's repair, if the switch goes bad, is you replace the entire latch assembly. Now I looked online, you can only get the switch, or the, I'm sorry, you can only get the latch assembly from Honda, it's a Honda OEM specific part. The cheapest I could find it for was like 250 bucks for a little tiny switch in there that has gone bad. Of course, they don't sell that switch separate. It'd be too hard to diagnose for their technicians, but some really awesome people over at oddyclub.com, Odyssey Forum, have figured this out, and so I'm just showing you how I'm going about fixing mine. So, back to the code here. You just hold the trip button in, and I think it's for like 10 or 15 seconds. And you can see it says, you know, so now they're all cleared, um, until the next time something throws one of those error codes. So, you go ahead and turn the key off. You want to make sure to pull your aluminum foil bit out down here, if I can find it. There we go. Pull your aluminum foil out. And of course, you'll want to put this doohickey back on. All right, so I got the seats out, or at least the, right, the passenger side and the middle seat. Um, I found a plethora of raisins and small toys and all kinds of good stuff that you find when you walk kids around. So I'm going to start taking this apart. I don't really know what I'm doing, so you guys are just kind of along, along with me on the ride. Um, I'm going to start with a couple tools. I got just a belt screwdriver and just a small flathead. Um, I can see that there's, down in the cup holder here, it looks like there's a screw access panel. Um, I know there's a clip holding this door lever on. Um, I think the window switch needs to come out. And the rest of it, I believe, is just clips that hold it on. So as far as getting the handle off, I saw someone mention that if you just take a rag and kind of shimmy it behind the door, that clip will pop out. So we'll give that a shot. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. So you just kind of work it back and forth. That's what it looks like. And the handle just slides off of the spines. Just kind of flex on the door. Pull that up. Just clip on the window, switch on. It's also a good idea to have a magnetic um, parts tray. Like this little spring, if you lose that, that'd be a no-no. That sticks right to the magnetic tray. 
You can get these things for free from Harbor Freight if you watch for the coupons. I really think the rest of it is it's held on with clips, so I'm just gonna pull. I don't think the rest of it's held on with clips. Looks like maybe you do need the door open because part of that lip goes down below the edge of the door. There we go. So, trim around the door needs to come off first, it looks like. This is a bit nerve wracking because this stuff is so flimsy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I broke that. I don't really see a way around breaking that though. These clips that hold the visor or the sunshade, they've got little wings on the sides and on the back. It, I think it had one on the front and that side too, and I broke those off. <laughs> okay, so here's something I just figured out. If you're taking the hooks off to hold the sun visor, if you look at the back side of the hook, you can see this little slot. Well, you have to get a little tool to pry in there, but that actually slides up and out, and then these will slide. They should slide out easily without breaking things. So learn from my mistake. See if I can do this from the outside. I'm just gonna try using a piece of wood to pry those clips loose in the back. Can't really get my hand in there. It actually worked pretty good. Once you think you got all the clips loose, you just lift it up. And here we go. You got your little window shade here behind this plastic, and the edge of your window sill clips over the edge of the door. All right. So you got all this plastic liner. You want to keep this intact if you can. Um, there is a thick black gooey seal around, and the best way to get that loose is just to take a razor blade right behind the plastic, kind of peel the plastic out, and take a razor blade and cut that black stuff. And that way, if you keep this intact, you can stick everything back on, and you'll still have a seal in your door. And these seals, they keep wind as you're driving down the road on a nice 30 degree winter day. It keeps that cold air from coming in the vehicle. It also keeps dust out. Helps keep moisture out of the vehicle as well. So there's a handy little grommet hole in the plastic. I'm just gonna kind of fold that back, slide it over the door, um, door lever post, and it'll hold it back out of the way. Here is our latch mechanism. Um, I am gonna crack this door open a little bit. So to get the latch mechanism out, there's, I believe, two bolts. Get you in closer here. So I believe this bolt here, that bolt, and then there's three bolts from the back, back there. And here's the latch loop I was talking about earlier. This is what the latch grabs onto and pulls the door in. With the door open. You can see here's where that loop fits into the latch, and you just gotta pull these three bolts out here. Top bolt, you don't wanna take out, you can see this little slot here. So it'll just slide back, and then the bolt will push out the other way. So I need to take these plugs loose, this gray plug, this black plug, and there's some cables here. I'm not sure how these open. I think they, if you can get you in front. These cables, the little retainers, snap in, and they snap in from the back side. It's like a clamshell that closes around the cable and then snaps in. And the Honda procedure says you have to remove the window and all that stuff, uh, but someone on Audi Club suggested that you can pull the window track, the lower window track mount bolt out, and the window track will flex enough to get this out. I think there's a little bracket that fits down inside there. There it goes. If you don't have skinny arms, you might need to get your kids to retrieve that, because it gets pretty thin down there. But there's the bracket that holds the window track on. Slid out of place. I need to try to release these cables on the back. So I finally figured out how to release the cable clips. There's one here, two here, and then two a little farther up. And um, these cables actually hook into a lock actuator and the door handle and all that stuff. I don't think I'm going to have to take this all the way out of the van to do this repair. So, but I'm just going to show you how I kind of finagle it up out of here to get it out. So there you go. Rotate it until this big plastic wing is pointed down, and then pull it straight up. All right, guys. So I decided to cut this plastic back a little farther um, so I can get the cables out. And just so I've got it on video, there's a green cable and a white cable. There's a green cable and a white cable that go to this latch. The green goes to the top spot, and the white goes to the middle spot. So there's a little clip that snaps loose. Mine fell, I believe, outside, so make sure to just take that all the way off. But you'll snap this little white end out of the frame there, and then twist the cable around to the opening, and this barrel should just slide out. Of course, doing it one-handed, 
I know what to do. There's that one. Remember, green goes on top. The white's a little different. There's this little yellow plastic clip on there. You've got to unclip it from the middle part of the cable, and then the cable will pull out. And it's got this different end on it. All right, so I'm inside on the kitchen table because where else would you do something like this? Just plug my soldering iron in because I know I'll need it shortly. I'm going to go ahead and strip this back. See, they use some red lock in there. That still sounds like it's clicking. I'm just going to test the switch manually. Got my bolt near here. And I'm just going to set it on continuity test. And I'm going to see. Looks like this terminal and then the one next to it is the black and the blue. So nothing there. So I'm touching both of those. That's what I should be hearing. So I got a blue wire here, black wire here, that comes straight through to the switch. So in either this position, where there's no, look, no pressure against the switch, I should either have continuity here, or when I press it down. I can hear the click, but I get no continuity. So that's the issue. Um, I'm going my new switch here. Here's the new switch that I got. I got this from a local distributor. Um, you can see it's a single pole, dual throw, and it has a lever with a little roller on it. So it's kind of the same style of switch, not the same exact form factor, but it does the same job. So I'll show you on this one what should happen. Let's see if I can get this to focus on here. I don't believe so. But on this one, the top pin is common, the middle pin is normally open contact, and the bottom pin is normally closed. So right now, if I touch the outside and the common, I've got continuity. When I push the switch, so when I activate the switch, see if I can get these. I don't have enough hands. When I push the switch, it should go off. And that's what we're looking for. That's how the switch on the latch mechanism should behave. So in a normal resting state without the switch being activated, the circuit should be closed. So I use the normally closed pin. And then when we activate the switch, it should open it. Should open the switch, break continuity. So something else you will need is some little tiny hardware. Um, this is a 2-56 machine screw and a nut. Maybe two of each. So I've got one through the switch and the existing screw hole, and I'm just going to mark with a pick where I need to drill a hole for the other. Okay, so I got my holes drilled. Looks like placement's going to work. Okay. Um, I am going to bend this arm just a little bit just to make sure that it's fully engaging the switch on that common pin, but I've got my blue wire attached to the normally closed pin, and my soldering iron is hot. I'm going to apply heat to the wire, let it wick up some solder. Should have continuity right now. Sweet. All right, so bolt this thing back together. Now I'm going to do just a dab of red Loctite. All right, guys, so I started this whole video, this process, uh, about 6 or 6.30, and right now it is 9 p.m. So I'll show you. I got the latch back in, and I've done probably, probably seven or eight um, cycles. That was probably number eight. So I can do a few more. I haven't buttoned the inside back up. I've just got the latch mechanism back in. All wires hooked up, all the cables hooked up. Um, just testing it out. One thing I will note that putting it back in, the window track, remember I removed just the bracket for the window track? Um, this to allow you to flex the window track, track out of the way. Um, the latch mechanism has to fit in between the window track and the inside of the door. So you gotta, you gotta really force that window track towards the outside of the vehicle to get the latch mechanism in place. Um, I, I did find that if I was able to get one hand in there and kind of flex it out of the way while pushing the latch backwards towards the back of the vehicle, and that seemed to work okay. It took me a little bit to get to that point. Um, another thing to note is the edges of the sheet metal inside the door are sharp, so just watch your fingers, watch your hands. I ended up cutting my hand, not too bad, but enough that I had to like stop and clean up blood so I didn't get it everywhere. So, um, but yeah, so that switch at my local distributor, I paid $10.75, that was a tax out the door. Um, the uh, screws, they were came in a two-pack from my local hardware store. The screws were $0.35, cents and the two nuts to go on were $0.35. Cents. So for less than 11 bucks, I've fixed this door You know, in, in three hours worth of time. I fixed this door, um, something that I paid a shop to do the door on the other side when it broke last year, and it cost me $1,000 uh, just in parts labor because the shop I took it to, they basically threw parts at it. They thought it was this one piece, and it wasn't, and they thought it was the latch mechanism, so they replaced that. They did both of those. Turns out it was neither of them. There was some loose connection back in the back area near where the motor that powers the door opened and closed, and they actually ended up having to pay a local dealer to troubleshoot that. So they, they couldn't figure it out. I paid them $1,000, brought it home, they said, oh yeah, it's good to go. And 
literally three door cycles and it stopped working again. So I took it back, they made it right, they got it fixed. Knowing now that I could have fixed it for probably $11, it's a little sickening, but um, at least I saved money on this side. Hopefully showing you guys how to do this so you guys can save yourself some money. You do need soldering skills. Um, I think they do make a switch with screw terminals. I wouldn't recommend that just because the screw terminals could come loose and then you'd be in the same boat. Solder's not going to come unstuck. So if you don't know how to solder or um, you find a buddy that knows how to solder, they can solder the switch in for you or something. But, you know, spend the 11 bucks. Um, I will post a link down in the description of where you can get the switch on Amazon. Um, it's actually cheaper than what I paid locally. I think 10 switches for like $6. Now they may not be as high quality, I don't know. But uh, it's still, you're under 20 bucks fixing a door that would cost normally $250 in parts only, no labor. So works for me. But anyway, I'm going to get in here, finish this up, get the uh, door panel back on. Um, assembly is basically just reverse of disassembly, so just rewind this video if you forget a step or two, and we'll talk to you all later. As always, if you like what I do, give me a big thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you catch anything that comes out in the future, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'll catch you all later.